Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to take a look at ratios. But before we get started, we got to get out Charlie. He would be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready? Yeah. Let's get started. Right there, ratios. A ratio represents a comparison of two quantities. The ratio of eight to two is sometimes written as an eight and a two separated by a colon and can also be represented as a fraction. So let's begin with this ratio of eight to two. Now, ratios are often used in recipes. For example, suppose a recipe for chicken soup calls for eight cups of chicken broth for every two cups of water. But suppose you don't have eight cups of chicken broth. Maybe you have four cups of chicken broth. So what we're gonna do is find an equivalent ratio that will allow us to use only four cups of chicken broth to make the soup. In other words, we're only gonna make half as much. So, Let's first write the ratio as a fraction. And notice 8 and 2 have a common factor of 2, so let's divide that out. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we get 4 over 1. Therefore, the ratio of 8 to 2 is equivalent to the ratio of 4 to 1. So if we only have 4 cups of chicken broth, we can still make the soup. We're only going to make half as much. And we're going to use 4 cups of chicken broth and 1 cup of water. So let's go on to a more complicated ratio. Here we have the ratio of 5 thirds to 7 6 Don't get scared. Let's write it as a fraction. Now let's use our lowest common denominator to clear those fractions or kung fu them. We have 5 thirds over 7 6 Our lowest common denominator is a 6. So we multiply top and bottom by 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 times 7 is 7 we get 10 to 7. So the ratio of 5 thirds to 7 6 is equivalent to the ratio of 10 to 7. All right, Charlie, let's do the same problem, but let's use a different approach. First begin by writing the ratio as a fraction, and now let's write it as a division problem. We now have 5 thirds divided by 7 6. Now instead of dividing by 7 6, we're going to do what, Charlie? Multiply by 6 7. Very nice, multiply by 6 7. And now the 6 and 3 have a common factor of 2, so we can cross-cancel because we're multiplying. 6 over 3 becomes 2 over 1, and we multiply our fractions straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and we get 10 over 7, which is the ratio of 10 to 7. Same answer that we got when we cleared the fractions. Okay, let's do another one here. Here is the ratio of 3 tenths to 7 tenths. Let's begin by writing it as a fraction, and now let's convert the decimals to fractions. We have 3 tenths over 7 tenths. Obviously, the lowest common denominator is a 10. So let's multiply top and bottom by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. And 10 divided by 1 is... 10 divided by 10 is 1. And 1 times 7 is 7. So the ratio of 3 tenths to 7 tenths is equivalent to the ratio of 3 to 7. Now let's do the same problem using a slightly different approach. We start with our fraction, 3 tenths over 7 tenths. Well, remember, when you multiply decimal by 10, it moves the decimal one place to the right. So we are going to multiply top and bottom by 10. That makes sense because when you have 0.3 over 0.7, you actually have 3 tenths over 7 tenths. It's the same problem. So the LCD is 10, and it does make sense. If you take 3 tenths and multiply by 10, you get 3. If you take 7 tenths and multiply by 10, you get 7. And of course, you're going to get the same answer. So clearing fractions is the same as clearing decimals because decimals are fractions. Okay, Charlie, let's do another one right there. Here we have the ratio of 3 fifths to 4 tenths. So we're mixing up fractions with decimals. Let's begin by writing it as a fraction. 3 fifths over 4 tenths. Now let's write the decimal as a fraction. 3 fifths over 4 tenths. But notice that denominator, 4 tenths. You can reduce it because 4 and 10 have a common factor of 2. Therefore, 4 tenths becomes 2 fifths. Now let's write this as a division problem. 3 fifths divided by 2 fifths. Now, Charlie, instead of dividing by 2 fifths, we're going to do what? Multiply by 5 halves. Very nice there, Charlie. Multiply by 5 halves. And now we can cross-cancel those 5s. Remember, those 5s are becoming 1s. And when you multiply the fraction straight across the top, straight across the bottom, you get 3 halves. Therefore, the ratio of 3 fifths to 4 tenths is equivalent to the ratio of 3 to 2. Very nice. 
Let's do another one. Here we go. Here's the ratio of 36 hundredths to 62 hundredths. Let's write it as a fraction. Now let's clear those fractions or clear those decimals, whatever you want to call it. If you have 36 hundredths over 62 hundredths, the lowest common denominator is 100. And remember, when you multiply a decimal by 100, you're told to move the decimal two places to the right. That makes sense because 36 hundredths times 100 is 36, and 62 hundredths times 100 is 62. Now, we're not done because 36 and 62 are both even numbers. They have a common factor of 2, so we'll divide out that common factor. Half of 36 is 18, and half of 62 is 31. So our answer is 18 over 31. So the ratio of, 30, of 36 hundredths to 62 hundredths is equivalent to the ratio of 18 to 31. Let's do another one. Here we have the ratio of 3 tenths to 21 hundredths. Let's first write it as a fraction. Now, let's think about this. You have 3 tenths over 21 hundredths. So your lowest common denominator is 100. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 100. But remember, you're told if you multiply decimal by 100, you move the decimal two places to the right. So let's do that. On the numerator, we have 0.3. So move the decimal two places to the right, puts it over here, but we need a zero for a placeholder, right? So 0.3 times 100 is 30, or 3 tenths times 100 is 30. In the denominator, we have 0.21, move the decimal two places to the right, we get 21. That makes sense because 21 hundredths times 100 is 21. 30 and 21 have a common factor of 3. So let's divide that common factor out. 30 divided by 3 is 10, and 21 divided by 3 is what, Charlie? 7. Very nice there. It's 10 7. So that's it with ratios. Now let me, let me, let me, let me leave you with a real ratio. For every hour that you're in class, you need to spend two hours doing your homework. So, We'll see you again soon.